Hello, in this presentation, we will record a transaction related to the sales receipt and deposit into our bookkeeping problem in Excel, keeping in mind how that same information could be input into accounting software such as QuickBooks. If you would like more information about the QuickBooks Pro, take a look at our comprehensive course in the link below. We're going to first take a look at QuickBooks quickly and then go back to Excel and enter this data into our Excel worksheet. When thinking about uh, QuickBooks, we're looking at the customer page, the home page. We're going to look at a sales receipt. That's going to be QuickBooks terminology for saying if we had a book problem terminology that we're going to make a sale for cash rather than making a sale on account, meaning rather than uh, getting accounts receivable and providing the work or in this case the, the goods, which will be a guitar in this case, we are uh, getting paid at that point in time. If we had not gotten paid, we would have the create invoice, which would then go to the receive payment. We would see receive in the mail at some point in the future. And then we would make the deposit. The create sales receipt, as it would be as if we were to buy something in the store, would bypass these first two items. And of course, be the point in time where we're going to have the transaction take place. The sale happened, revenue being recognized, and the form of payment being made at the same point in time. If we were to look at this sales receipt item, we're going to have a customer. We're just going to type in the customer. If it's a new customer, then within the accounting system, we would just add the new customer, and that would allow QuickBooks to set up a subsidiary ledger as we go through this process. Then we're going to set up the rest of the information we're going to have the check type, which is going to be the date. We've got the sale uh, number, going to automatically populate. And then we just need to know the item number. And if we can imagine that they brought the guitar up, which is an Epiphone Les Paul, then we would just type in the ELP and the rest would populate for us pretty much, which would be the quantity of one. The rates would automatically populate at the 500 in this case. We're also going to calculate the sales tax, the sales tax 5% which will be $25, which was 5, 500 times uh, 5% gives us $25, the 500 then, plus the $25 sales tax gives us what we expect to receive from the customer, 525. Pretty easy data input screen to go through. When we think about it, however, the transaction is a bit more complex than just the data input screen in that, let's think about what happens. One, the sales receipt means that we're getting paid and we would put it into cash, but not yet into the checking account. We're going to first put it into this account, undeposited funds, the funds we have that we have not yet to go into the bank with. And then the other side is going to be usually sales or revenue. And that amount's going to be uh, for only the 500, the sales price, not the total amount we expect to, re to receive, the 525. The difference will have to be recorded as well because we expect to get this $25 and that then needs to go into a payable, which will go to uh, something like sales tax payable because we owe it in the future to the state or whoever is charging the sales tax. Then we have a whole other side of this and that is that we have the inventory going down and the related cost of goods sold to pieces not on this at all, meaning I don't know what the cost of goods sold is based on this information, uh, but QuickBooks does based on this item that we are using. That item will tell QuickBooks what the cost is as well. Let's go through the same information in Excel. Within Excel, we'll enter the same data and we are going to enter, remember if we saw a book problem, the book problem would basically be saying that we made a sale of inventory and uh, received cash for it rather than it being on account. So that means that uh, we're going to add, we can ask our question, is cash affected? It is, but we're not getting the checking account in this case. We're going to put it into the undeposited funds. Undeposited funds like cash accounts have a debit balance because they're assets. We're going to increase it by doing the same thing to it, which in this case will be another debit. So we're going to copy the undeposited funds, scroll down to the next open area. The uh, date is going to be uh, 2 12 Put that one more time, 2-12, and I know we're jumping around on the dates a little bit on this second problem here. We'll put the undeposited funds on top in B20, right click and paste 1, 2, 3. 
the amount of the undeposited funds uh, is going to be the sales price plus the amount of sales tax. So we can calculate that a couple different ways. If we had the sales price of $500, sales tax times 0.05 gives us another 25. If we were to add that to the original price of 500, that'll give us 525. It's helpful to do that in one calculation, taking the 500 times 105% or 1.05, that too giving us the 525. Let's do that one more time in our formula here in cell C20 by selecting equals 500 times 105 or 1.05. There we have it. And then the other side is typically going to go to sales because we earned revenue. Sales is down here at the bottom and we have uh, sale that it goes in order. Assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenses. We're talking about merchandising sales. We're selling merchandise that merchandise, guitars, and it has a credit balance. We're gonna increase it by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So we're gonna copy the merchandise sales. We're gonna put that in B21, right click and paste one, two, three. The amount, however, is only gonna be 500, the sales price, not including the sales tax. We don't get to keep the sales tax, not part of our revenue. So we're gonna say it's a credit of or negative of 500. Then we have the difference, the 525 minus 500 is 25, or we can just do that. I'm going to do that uh, with the negative sum function. We can also take 500 times 5%, which would calculate the same amount of sales tax. I'm going to use the plug formula. We're going to say negative SUM, double click the sum function, and then highlight these cells. And it's just going to take the sum of those two, this is a positive number, this is a negative, and therefore taking the difference, which is a credit or a negative of 25. That then needs to go to the uh, sales tax payable, sales tax payable account here. It is a credit balance. We're going to increase it by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So we will copy the sales tax payable. We're going to put that in cell B22, right click and paste 123. We're going to highlight these second two. I'm just going to indent these by going to the home tab. Alignment group, increase indentation. We have now once again journalized the journal entry in the general journal, and now we'll go through the process of posting to the general ledger. The undeposited funds account here, we're going to post that to the same area on the general ledger. So the general ledger, here it is, third to last asset account. Before we do, make sure the screens are, are frozen. That'll make it a little bit easier. So we're going to go up to AJ1. We're going to go to the View tab, the Windows group, Freeze Panes, and then make sure that your panes are frozen. And click that, and then when you move over, it should be a little bit easier. So then we're going to go find this. It's going to be the third to last account, so we're going to go to the right. We're looking for undeposited funds. Then if we scroll down, there it is. It's in AU22, so AU22, we're going to select equals and point to this 525 bringing the balance up from 300 by 525 to 825. Scrolling back over, we're scrolling back over, scrolling back up. We see that 825 here as well. Then we're going to go to the merchandise sales. Here are the merchandise sales. It's in order on the uh, trial balance. It's a sales. It's going to be assets, liabilities, equity, and then revenue or the sales items down here. This is what we want, the first one. It's going to be in the same order from the trial balance here to the general ledger to the right. So we're going to scroll over to the general ledger, looking for merchandise sales. We've got assets, we've got liabilities, equity, and then here are the merchandise. So we want to be in cell BH29. So we're in cell BH29. We will say equals and then point to that $500. That's going to increase this balance by 500 to 500. Scrolling back to the trial balance, we're going to scroll back to the trial balance. We should see that same 500 on the trial balance right there. Next, we're going to record the sales tax payable. Here is the sales tax payable. Scrolling up, we can see the sales tax payable here on the trial balance. Third to last orange or liability account will be the third to last orange or liability account on the general ledger as well. So we're going to scroll to the right, looking for that orange liability account. There it is, sales tax payable. 
we want to be on the credit side we're in cell bd25 bd25 we'll say that that equals point to this 25 and enter amount goes up to 148 that what we owe for the sales tax payable to the state scrolling back over we see that same amount here on the trial balance that's going to be the first component of this transaction. We also have the second piece, and that's going to be the fact that we have cost of goods sold and inventory, or I would usually think about it as inventory is decreasing because we gave inventory in order to help generate revenue. So this needs to go down, and the related cost to that cost of goods sold, the expense, will uh, be the other side, the debit or increase in the expense, decreasing net income. So inventory, we know it needs to go down. We don't know the dollar amount yet. We're going to go find that on our worksheet, but we know it does need to go down and it has a debit balance. So to make it go down, we'll do the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So I'm going to copy this item. We're going to scroll down. I'm going to skip a couple lines. I'm going to skip a line to put a new journal entry, skip another line to put it on the bottom. So I'm in cell B25, right click and paste one, two, three. Now, I'm not going to put the amount yet. I don't quite know it yet, so we'll just put the, uh, the account first. So we'll go to the Home tab, Alignment, Increase the Indentation, and then the debit related to this, the expense of us consuming the uh, inventory in order to help generate revenue, is called Cost of Goods Sold. So here's the Cost of Goods Sold. It is an expense item. We're going to copy that item. We're going to put that on top in cell B24 right click and paste one two three there's our journal entry we just now need to know the amount the amount would not typically be on the sales sticker when we run the process so we got to basically go to our worksheet over here that's tracking inventory it's backing up this number here backing up that number on the inventory assets so we're going to scroll to the right and find that so we'll keep on going over here. We're looking for the inventory assets. So I'm just going to keep on going until we get to our subledger. And scroll up. This is going to be the first one. We got another ELP, which are so that's our most popular item. And we're going to say here that uh, it is on 212. I'm in cell uh, CE9. And we're going to say that we made a sale here. So we're tracking the cost of goods sold. So we're tracking what is left and what has been sold so we're going to say that how many units do we have remember remember that we're using an, an average method so over here all we have is this one uh guitar at four hundred dollars so that's what we're going to put in this new line item we're going to say as of this date we sold that one guitar at 400 and multiply that out and this equals this one guitar times the 400 it means that we paid it, it was for four hundred dollar cost what do we have left well we had one guitar we sold that one we now have zero left i'm going to do that with a formula by saying this equals that one minus this one enter costs the average of 400 so it's going to bring that down and then of course if we multiply that out it's going to be zero because it's going to be zero times 400 and we'll have nothing left so our our entry then here is going to be four hundred dollars that's how much it cost us we sold it for 500 it cost us 400 we're going to put that in the debit and the credit when we go to our worksheet so that's over here on the freeze pane so that's way over in c24 and d25 if we go back over here and scroll down to the end then we see this formula at the bottom. We need to update. We need to update that formula. So we could do that by double clicking on it and seeing what is uh, now in the formula. Scrolling all the way back up, and we see this 400. Uh, that's CP8, and we need that to be going to CP. I would believe nine now. So it needs to go down one. That's going to be the first item here. So I'm going to make that eight a nine and enter and there we have it if that's a, a little confusing you could just redo the whole formula just delete the formula go equals scroll all the way to the top select the last one in each column so i'm going to say that one plus here's the formula scrolling down that one plus here's the formula scrolling down that one plus here's the formula scrolling down and so on and so forth plus this one plus the second one plus the second one plus the last one and enter 
So that's that 1,712. Once we complete uh, the journal entry, once we post the journal entry, we hope that this will be the amount in the inventory amount for the trial balance and general ledger. To go back over, I'm going to put my cursor on this side of the freeze panes and select the right arrow a couple times and it should just bounce back. So now we're back over here and we're going to post this now. So here's what we have. There's the journal entry we need to post. So first we're going to post the cost of goods sold. Here it is on the trial balance. We're going to scroll to the right till we find the cost of goods sold on the general ledger. So scroll in right, it's in order, assets and then liabilities and then equity. There's the cost of goods sold. So we're going to be in BK22. We're in BK22. We're going to select equals and point to that 400, bringing the balance up to 400. Scrolling back to the right, we're going to find that same amount on the trial balance. So here it is on the trial balance. So we increase revenue by 500 and then uh, increase the expense. So the decrease, I mean the net increase in net income is the difference between those two. Next, we're going to record the inventory assets. So scrolling up, we see the inventory assets here. We're going to record that piece. And that's going to be uh, the <laughs> third account up here. So it's going to be the third account over here. So we're going to scroll over to the third account. We're going to scroll down. It's the inventory asset right there. It's an AQ25. So we are in cell AQ25. We will select equals and point to that 400 on this side. Actually, I'm going to delete that. It should be on the credit side. So we are in AR25. AR25 and then equals and then point to that 400. Bringing the balance down from 2113 to uh, 1713. Scrolling back over, we should see that same amount on the trial balance. And as we recall, this is the number that was on the subsidiary ledger that we created from the subsidiary ledger. So that should tie out or does tie out as well. We're now going to see uh, a look at the trial at the financial statements and see what's going on with the financials. So we're going to go to the check in. I'm going to go up top. Actually, first, let's unfreeze the panes. So we're going to go to the view tab, windows group, freeze panes and unfreeze the panes. And then we're going to go up and I'm just going to point to the financials to see what has changed. We changed the inventory. We did something to that and scrolling down. We did something to merchandise. So we're going to go see that we did something to cost of goods sold. So we'll go take a look at those items on the financial statements. Scrolling to the right till we find these financial statements. We see that. Cash has been changed. We got the inventory changed. We see that total assets still equal liabilities plus equity. There was an impact on the income statement. We know that revenue went up by the 500 as did cost of goods sold. Net increase in gross profit $100. That will be the same as in uh, the ending balance down here as well. Our ending balance currently a loss at 246 and we could see that being carrying down to the statement of equity, contributing to the total balance of 143,929. That too found on the balance sheet, 143,929.